Man. Um, Caitlyn gets treated like a scrub in this league. It's the darndest thing, man. Um, their movement and in their attempt to try to show everyone that there's no favoritism and she's just like everyone else. The WNBA league from the commissioner to the marketing department to the opposing players and coaches to the refs to everyone except for her fan base, even the media, the WNBA media. The pendulum swung so far in the other way, away from she's the greatest thing on earth and she's the savior of this league that was fledgling and flailing and floundering for 30 years, 28 years, And we're so grateful to have her, and we're so happy to have her, and we we really appreciate her. They swung from there all the way over to treating her like a scrub. She gets treated like a scrub by everyone. Opposing players always trying to bully her and rough her up. They don't even want to mention her name half the time when asked about her. Calling her fans racist. Not leaving her off the Olympic team. Even her own organization at times. And this technical file that she got the other day in Seattle. I mean against Seattle is indicative of that whole swing to the other side that the league has tried to do collectively. Like, look, she's not really all that. We were having incremental growth, whatever that means. And we were on our way to doing this and that and that, and it just all happened uh, happened when she came into the league. And her getting texts for foolishness like this is an example of that. It's a symptom. It's a a canary in the coal mine. If you didn't know how she was being treated, if you just started watching the WNBA today and found out about Caitlin Clark and someone told you, hey, man, she's two texts away from being suspended. (laughs) You'd be like, wow, that's crazy. How does that happen? That's how it happened. They're they're doing everything they can to prove that she's nothing special. But by doing that, they're actually being biased against her the other way. This technical file she got for doing this, for being mad at herself, against the Seattle Storm was egregious, but not the most egregious technical foul she got against the Seattle Storm this year. Caitlin takes the shot, nails it. The girl she was guarding jabs her in the throat. Okay, jabs her in the throat. First waits behind her, makes Caitlyn bump into her. Caitlyn doesn't see her, and then jabs her in the throat. I don't know if Caitlyn took the jab, but she took that jab. Boom. And, um... 
Caitlyn got teed up for that. She ended up getting the check for that. She was not happy. But both players got teased. That's one of her tees. And I'm demanding. I'm not asking. I am demanding that the league rescind that technical foul. I'm demanding it. And I think all of you guys, along with me, need to demand that this technical foul be rescinded. You have to rescind this technical foul. She got punched in the throat. She didn't swing on the girl who punched her in the throat like many people would have done in this league. She just did what any red-blooded American would have done. She got up in the girl's face like, hey, you just punched me in the neck. Ouch, that hurt, man. I don't like that. Why'd you do that? And this went largely um, unreported because the WNBA media, Monica McNutt, Chene Obumake, um, L. Duncan, Andrea Carter, Jamel Hill. They have bullied everybody into silence, okay, <laughs> about this issue. Fine. That ship is passed. Now we're revisiting it because she's approaching a, a suspension now. And this is one of the incidents that has led to her approaching in the suspension. And if you think for one second that the WNBA is going to say, hey, man, uh, we need to maybe not give Caitlin Clark any more bogus texts for the rest of the year, man. I mean, if she deserves it, that's fine. But these bogus texts that she's been getting, like the two I just showed you against the Seattle Storm, we need to hold off. If you think that the WNBA is smart enough to send out a memo to their refs, hey, man, look, un under no circumstances do you let her abuse you and violate the game and treat her different than any other player. But these bogus texts, these insanely petty and just mind-boggling. Text that you're giving her, you got to not do that. If you think the WNBA is smart enough to do that so that she doesn't miss a game, you haven't been watching. They'll, <laughs> listen, They've screwed up everything. They have not made one good decision. They have not made one normal decision, like just the, the layup decision. Every time they've dribbled up down the half court and thrown it, <laughs> turned around and thrown it over their head like this. They've never just made the layup. As I said in the video the other day, since the draft, it's been layup after layup after layup handed to the WNBA. And each time they've dribbled the ball to half court, turned around, and chucked the ball over the back of the head. So since I know that the refs are not going to change, 
and they're not going to be told to change. And the animus and the zeitgeist in that league is so like calloused and embedded towards against her. We need this tech rescinded. This tech got to be rescinded. You got to rescind this tech when she got punched in the throat. I'm sorry, man. You have to rescind the tech when she got punched in the throat. Well, I, I got a technical for basically being mad at myself because I missed the three and then I went and hit the backboard. And he told me it was disrespectful to the game of basketball. So I don't know. It reminded me of the technical that I got in college where I said, damn it, where it's like a personal frustration. They told her that that technical that she got for slamming her hand, the most prized, precious right hand in the sports world. No hand has more riding on it than Caitlin Clark's right hand. The most for slamming the most prized, precious hand in the sports world against the base of the backboard of the of the rim, the stanchion was disrespectful to the game. <laughs> well, here's the thing, man. Um when Angel Reese clobbered upside the head, was that disrespectful when Easy Magmagore tried to take her head off? Was that disrespectful? When Kennedy Carter tried to knock her in the middle of next week, was that disrespectful to the game? Is all the petty stuff is what Skylar Diggins did. Was that disrespectful to the game? It's funny how of all the things that have happened this year, <laughs> Caitlin Clark being mad at herself and out of frustration hitting the stitch <laughs> is the first time we've heard all year about something being disrespectful to the game. Just think about that. Now, I want you to ask you guys a serious question, and I, and I would like for you to answer this in the chat for me. If CC had punched VV in the throat, what would have happened? Just go ahead in the chat and write, if CC had punched VV, Victoria Vivians, in the throat, XYZ would have happened. Let's play that game. How would that have turned out? Would they still be rolling around on the ground? On that, on the floor, <laughs> would would there have been sensitivity training? Would Caitlin Clark have been suspended for that? Just for that? Tell me what you think would have happened if CC had punched VV in the throat? Because this was just a double technical. Each player got a check. That was it. Like, subscribe, get in the comment section. Peace.